Okay, this video may be the absolute worst and most confusing video that I will ever make, but I'm hoping that it's going to be one of the most useful because there's a pretty interesting concept that needs to be explained when it comes to root causes in SIBO. What's up and welcome to the video. I'm Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, gut health expert, licensed pharmacist, fitness enthusiast, and creator of SIBO Shortcuts, the online program helping you get rid of SIBO and keeping it from coming back. This video is actually going to be a sneak peek of one of the 40 plus resources in SIBO Shortcut that help you navigate this very frustrating condition. There's still a lot of people that get SIBO and then get rid of it and then get it again and unfortunately never end up really resolving it because they haven't been exposed to the big picture of what's actually going on. So the purpose of this video is going to be number one to show you the various factors and chain of steps that actually lead to SIBO. Number two help you gain a deep understanding of why you actually got SIBO or IMO intestinal methanogen overgrowth and then hang around towards the end because we're going to list a bunch of root causes later on. All right, if you take a look over here, most people think that getting SIBO looks something like this, where you have a root cause and then you end up getting SIBO. While this holds true occasionally, it's not always this simple. And to make matters worse, thinking that this is the only way it happens can even take your focus off the real issue of what's actually going on. I've personally developed the concept that I'm going to show you right now because in the past, I've actually struggled to fully explain the root causes of SIBO is thoroughly as I wanted. That this is why I wanted to create a better way to do this. So instead of this, in reality, getting SIBO often looks like this. Don't worry, we're gonna break this down in a lot of detail. We're actually gonna do a little Quentin Tarantino move. We're gonna explain the very end first, starting with SIBO and then work our way back. So starting with the last sequence, we have SIBO or IMO. You have an overgrowth of bacteria or methane producing archaea in your intestine and are suffering from gastrointestinal and sometimes non-gastrointestinal side effects. So most of the time, there's actually a step in between when you actually get SIBO or IMO and when your root cause happens. I'm talking about one of your body systems that prevents SIBO from happening gets disrupted. And from my perspective, there's four of these. Number one is an impaired migrating motor complex or MMC, meaning that you have poor or slow gut motility. This is by far the most important one of the four. The MMC is a system of nerves and muscles in your small intestine. And basically after you eat, it helps sweep clean your small intestine of food, bacteria, and other debris. It starts at the very beginning of the small intestine near the stomach and works its way all the way to the end toward the large intestine. You can kind of think of it as squeezing a tube of toothpaste from the very end all the way to the beginning to get the toothpaste out. When the MMC is working properly, it's typically very good at cleaning out your small intestine. However, if the MMC is not working properly, it can be very different. You can kind of think of it like a river instead of a pond. If the water is moving quickly in a river, there's not going to be a chance for bacteria to sit and grow there. However, if the motility is poor, the water is stagnant, think of a pond, it's really easy for bacteria to stay there, grow and produce more bacteria. The second body system that can get disrupted is how many digestive secretions your body is able to put out, which directly impacts the strength of your immune system. When I say digestive secretions, we're talking about stomach acid, bile, and digestive enzymes, which can each play a role in the digestion of food and also limiting the number of microorganisms that survive as they pass through the GI tract. The third body system that can get disrupted is the ileothecal valve, which is a valve that's separates the small intestine from the large intestine. Ideally, the ileothecal valve should only be allowing contents to travel from the small intestine to the large intestine. This is really important because when we think of where 99% of the bacteria and microbes in our microbiome are, they're in the large intestine, they're not in the small. So if your ileothecal valve is stuck in an open position and not doing what it should be, we're essentially removing the Hoover Dam from doing its job. And you can get all those bacteria from the large intestine working their way back the wrong way into the small intestine intestine where they're a lot more likely to cause you digestive symptoms. And then lastly, the fourth body system that can get disrupted again relates to the small intestine, but this time we're talking about a physical impediment to the small intestinal motility. This happens if something like an adhesion, which are bands of scar tissue that form usually after abdominal surgeries or C-section surgeries, or obstructions, meaning a blockage of some other sort in the small intestine. If one of these four body systems that we discussed gets disrupted, possible that you may end up with SIBO. And now we're going to move into root causes and all the root causes that I'm going to mention, which you're probably going to be more familiar with, can all end up making one of these body systems that I just mentioned be disrupted. Root causes may include, but are definitely not limited to, and I'm just going to put these up on the screen right here. If you'd like, feel free to stop the video.
video so you can read them. This may not be a full list of root causes, but it definitely gives you a good idea of some things to look for. I will highlight food poisoning, which is the very first one I listed. This is the personal reason I got SIBO. And to the best of my knowledge, this is the most common reason people end up with this condition. As a quick note, it's not necessary to go out and test for all of these particular conditions and situations, but it is good to be aware of some of these and may give you ideas on how you can address some root causes and prevent your symptoms. Some of these root causes, they're not able to be reversed. Some extra focus and ongoing attention may be required to keep you from having ongoing symptoms. For example, if we look here, food poisoning, this was my root cause back in 2011. I can't go back and un-food poison myself. I wish that was possible because I wouldn't have to go through nonstop vomiting for 24 hours plus and then be bloated and gassy for eight years after. I digress. In this case, even though the root cause was food poisoning, we can't fix that or go back and change that, but we can focus on gut motility. Some things I've done are meal spacing, prokinetics, and not snacking throughout the day. If you want to see more about what I've done specifically, you can click this link right here. All right, the last thing I'm going to talk about here, which may not always really come into play when talking about how you get SIBO, but predisposing factors sometimes can be related. So essentially, this is a root cause of the root cause. For example, in some cases, such as diabetes, there are definitely predisposing factors. If you eat a poor diet high in refined carbohydrates and sugars for 30 years, you are more likely to get diabetes. And although diabetes may have been the root cause for why your gut motility became slow, there were a lot of cinnamon buns and sodas that were contributing to this far before you ever got SIBO. All right, for a final word, the exact steps to cause SIBO can vary for each individual situation, but hopefully this video at least wasn't super confusing and helped you understand a little bit better some of the complexities of this gastrointestinal condition. If you remember one thing from this video, remember that even if you're going through some sort of SIBO treatment, whether it be antibiotics, herbals, please focus on gut motility afterwards and supporting your migrating motor complex because treating SIBO successfully is great, but obviously we don't want it to return. That is all for today. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel for more related content. I post a new video weekly in YouTube Shorts as well throughout the week. If you're looking for more targeted help with SIBO and want to see more information like the info in this video, you can check out SIBO Shortcut by clicking the link in the description below or going to SIBO Shortcut info.com. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.